In this tutorial in CyberLink Photo Director 365, we'd like to show you some of the new tools available to do fine facial editing if you're a subscriber of Photo Director as of April 2023. We're going to use so many features that we'll break this up into two separate tutorials so we don't miss anything. So with the splash screen up, I'm going to click on the Organize and Adjust button in the upper left corner. And that opens it up. And here I'm in my Library tab in the upper left corner. I have three photographs with faces. And we're going to use each of them in the course of this and the next tutorial to show you some of the different features of this fine-tune editing for faces. We'll start with this picture of a group. And to get to the tool, I need to click on the Create button at the very top. And then under the Edit, I need to choose Guided. And in the upper left, I have a People Beautifier I want to click on. And then I want to click on Face Tools. And immediately my copy pops up and says more than one face was detected. Select the face you want. I'll do that. We'll just click the gentleman here on the right. And then we'll zoom in on him. And now we're in to the Face Shaper option, which is the brand new option with these five great tools. I'm going to click on that. And each of these five tools is a tab here, but there's also some important things at the top we're going to show you about as well. So let's look at the feature points, which you can turn on or off. When I click on that, you see each of these will define the face. Now the AI has done a good job. You can move them around with your mouse to make it a little more precise. You want to make sure that you don't move any of them too far, especially the chin or the, or the ones at the sides of the jaw. On the other ones, it would be where the eyes are. You want to make it as good as possible, but you can tweak the AI guess on what is the face. And we're on the first of the five options, which is change the width. If I drag to the right, it gets, gets wider, and to the left, it gets narrower. You don't have to have the feature points lit up. You can have them invisible and it will still do the same job. For example, here I can move and I can widen this face again or make it much more narrow. If you want to reset what you've done, you drag down and you click on the reset button in the lower right part of that quadrant. Now let me show you something else that's important. We're going to back up and fit everybody on the page and click on change face. So here, let's assume now I want to edit a different person or an additional person. I just click on the face I'm going to zoom in again, as I often do, and now I can edit that individual. Again, I can click on the feature points, modify them, and do any of these five options. We'll get into those details later. And yet, there's one more thing to notice. I'm going to go back to fit everyone on the screen. If I don't see a face that is actually in the photograph and the AI didn't detect it, I have a way of doing it manually. That's what the Add Face is for. So let's assume there's a child right here and their face is showing and AI didn't find it. I click on Add Face and I'll have its blue box which I can make larger or smaller. I can also reposition. And let's assume we have a child's face right there. When I'm done, I click on Done. And now if I click on the Show Feature Points, you notice it's assumed that that area was a face and I could edit that person even if they weren't detected. If I click on Change Face, now that is an option as well as the other ones were. Or I can go back to Change Face, go back to any other face, and resume my editing there if I want. Let's look a little bit at the Face Reshape option in this tutorial. We've looked at Width already, and you can change the width of the face slightly. You can change the forehead. Dragging to the right will increase the size of the forehead. To the left, it will minimize it a little bit. You can change the chin at the very bottom of the face. You can lower it or raise it. And you can also change the jaw. But you notice when it comes to jaw, you have these other controls, L, L plus R, and R. When you're dealing with a part of the body that is symmetrical, left and right, and you want to move it all together, you leave it to the default, which is L plus R. And here I can take the jaw and I can make the jaw slightly smaller on both sides. But I have another option. If I want to change one side, I can click on right 
and maybe I can make the right side just a little smaller. I can click on left, you notice it defaults back to zero, and I can make that even more small. And so that gives me the option on symmetrical parts of the human body to modify them independently, left side and right side. So what I want to do now is go back to another photograph. Let's not change this right now. And let's take this gentleman here. I want to show you by going to Create and Guided and Face Tools again. Now you notice it didn't ask because there's only one face. We'll go on the Face Shaper and show the feature points. Even if they're not looking straight at the camera, as this guy isn't, you can still use these tools. Now here again the glasses are going to be an issue but I can still use the face shaper and the other tools to change the way this gentleman looks, even though it's mostly a side shot or a 45 degree shot of his head. So that's nice to know that you can modify these kinds of things. In the next tutorial, we're going to deal with the other four tabs and a few other features of this brand new tool in PhotoDirector 365.